16, 9 through 13. This is the New King James Version. And I say unto you, make to yourselves friends of the mammon of unrighteousness, that when you fall, they may receive you into everlasting habitation. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. If therefore you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? <laughs> And if you have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. That's the reading of God's holy and unchangeable word. You may be seated in his presence. We've been in a conversation for the last month or so uh, using the acrostic focus, using the acrostic that uses the word focus. And what we have talked about is we cannot get anything accomplished in this world, in this life, if we are not Focus. I know you saved, I know you sanctified, I know that you are on your way to heaven, but I came to tell you, you can't even keep your relationship with the Lord unless you are focused. So in the first instance, we talked about faithfulness. Focus requires faithfulness. Can the Lord count on you? Is the question that we all have to ask, and, and it goes a little further than that, because we have to ask a secondary question. Can the Lord count on me when things are not going my way? It's easy, it's easy to, to stick with God and to, and to keep your assignment when everything is going your way. But what about when your ducks are not in a row? Second one is obstinance, stubbornness. Sometimes you just have to take a stand, dig in your heels, and stand up for righteousness sake. Obstinance uh, requires, sisters and brothers, that one, we know what is right, what is the truth, and that we don't waver in that which is the truth. Last week, we talked about courage. That is, add to your faith courage. There is no lack of faith in the church. We all believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. But now, in order to move or to get things done, to move your faith in, into action, it requires courage. Somebody say courage. I sat there thinking just a moment ago how it is that, that our band and, and uh, everybody that sings on the various Sunday mornings, they are doing it live every single time. There are no retakes. Nobody goes back and, and there's no Memorex. Those of you who remember cassette tapes. Nobody goes back and, re and records over what they do. They either get it right or they jack it up. And every Sunday they come and they bless our soul. Don't you know that requires courage? Mm. And some of you have made it this far, made it this far. And it's not that you were the, the, the smartest one in the group. It's because you had the most courage. You, you were able to step out on what you know the Lord was calling you to do. Am I right about that one? All right, today, today, uh, we move to the you, undivided, undivided. If you need a subtopic, make up your mind, undivided. Are we together? To be sure, sisters and brothers, from our initial uh, contact or uh, interaction with the Lord, God was calling us out of worldly ideas and worldly philosophies and worldly methods of doing things so that we might represent him uh, while we are here on this earth. Don't miss it. You are the Lord's hands, feet, and heart. People will see God through you to be sure. People are empowered today. You are empowered and and you are positioned by the Lord such that you will show the world 
an alternative. You will show the people of the world an alternative to the ways of this world that's really killing them while it's telling them it's keeping them alive. I know that you've been told and you've been taught and you've even been trained to just go along and get along. You've been told and you've been taught and you've been trained to just, to just accept whatever life brings your way, bear your cross, everything is going to be all right in the end. But I came with a different story today. I'm standing in John's shoes to remind you that God calls us to reject the ideas and the notions of this world that tell us, that, that tell us to kill or be killed, to reject the ideas and the notions of this world that tell us that greed is the way to go. But we know that every good and every perfect gift comes from the above. We know that all that the Father does for us and allows in our lives is for our good and not to damage us. <laughs> Are we still together? Thank you very much. <laughs> I used to, this is an aside. <laughs> I used to have a seminary professor, uh, uh, and, and if somebody would sneeze in the classroom, and, and everybody would say, God bless you. And he would say, don't say God bless you. They sneezing on us, giving us all they germ. <laughs> <laughs> okay, come on back. Let's <laughs> Somebody say undivided. undivided. Whether you want to believe it or not, sisters and brothers, you are God's living epistle that is written by the awesome hand of God to show this world that God's way is the right way. Whether you want to believe it or not, you show the people around you that you might start at the bottom, but you don't have to end up at the bottom. You show the people around you that something good really does come out of Nazareth or whatever the name of your hood is. Uh, you show the people around you that your best days are ahead of you. You show the people around you that the, that the truth is stronger than a lie, that resurrection is stronger than death, that God always has another move in our lives. Do not miss it. You are God's witness on this earth. Can I keep going? Look at it again, sisters and brothers, because when we look at our text in its entirety, somebody say context. When you look at the context of our text, what you will recognize is that Jesus is training those uh, who represent the Lord, not just while he was on this earth, but those who will have to carry the message when he goes back to be with the Lord. One ought to be careful to learn from what Jesus teaches us. Now, to be sure, you can't really grasp or wrap your arms around chapter 16 until you go back and read chapter 15. For this conversation kicks off at chapter 15 and verse 1. Here is what Jesus shows us if you go back. You remember that he's talking to, that he's teaching uh, what the book calls publicans and sinners, the people that nobody wants to have anything to do with. And so what Jesus tells us is uh, that you've got to share with those who are willing to go along with you and cut off those who are just going along for the ride. Remember, the publicans and the sinners were not the only ones in this crowd, uh, but they are the ones who decided that Jesus had something to say that was worthwhile listening to. While they were listening, you recall that the that the church people, uh, the church going crowd, the Pharisees and those who know the law were in the vicinity as well. But rather than receiving the Lord, they were they were content to reject the, to reject the message and uh, the messenger. And so Jesus does not waste time uh, trying to teach them, uh, but Jesus teaches those who want to be taught. Don't go to sleep on me. I promise you I'm going somewhere. Chapter 15 teaches us, sisters and brothers, that everybody who is in your circle is not necessarily going along with you. And so you can't share, get this, 
You can't share the intimate details of your vision of the revelation that God has given you of the plan for your next move with everybody. Because there are some folk who are just around you to try to poke holes in what the Lord is doing in your life. Can I keep going? Chapter 15, Jesus is talking to the crowd that wants to hear him while those who don't want to hear him are in the vicinity. But check chapter 16. Chapter 16 opens with Jesus the Bible says, speaking directly to the disciples. Somebody say the disciples. It is interesting, sisters and brothers, that chapter 15 is general knowledge. You remember the stories, right? The story about the lost coin, the story about the lost sheep, the story about the prodigal son. General stories about salvation and God's love for us. But when we get to chapter 16, now Jesus begins to go into detail about how to live what he taught in chapter 15. Don't go to sleep on me. I'm telling you this is going to bless you. In chapter 15, it's general knowledge about salvation. In chapter 16, Jesus says, let's get down to business. I just came to tell somebody today that when it's, when it's time to let the rubber hit the road, when it's time to put the plan into action, when the idea moves from the paper to, to your feet and your hands, you can't take everybody with you. No, and let me put it this way, that club needs to be exclusive. Everybody that fills out an application is not necessarily qualified. Go on and talk, Domain. It is interesting. It is interesting to me. The three crowd. One, I just heard that this Jesus is saying something. So I'm going to sit here and make a determination based upon what he says, whether or not I'm going to follow him. Publicans and sin. You know, the crowd that that nobody wants to deal with. Second crowd, uh, those who should have known better, right? The church crowd, the, the ones who know the word and they reject the message and the messenger. They say one thing, but they live another way. Those, those, who, those, those who claim Christianity, uh, if I put it in contemporary terms, those who claim Christianity but don't exactly live out the ideals and the principles of Christianity. You know, you know the people who uh, at election season will, will claim, uh, will talk about their relationship with the Lord and yet perpetuate the prison industrial complex such that our children, that such that a certain percentage is guaranteed to go from the schoolyard to the prison yard. You know the crowd. You know the ones that are fight for Second Amendment rights, but not fight for the right to make a decent wage so you can support your family. You know, you know the ones. You know the ones that have come to church uh, and, and we accept them as they are. But the truth of the matter is, their hearts are filthy and dirty, and so they, their design is to steal and to kill and destroy. You know the ones. Ones, right who claim to represent their hood and they're keeping it 100 but the fact of the matter is they're doing more to destroy the community because they want to shoot their brother man than to stand up for the community you know the ones who, who develop a superiority complex even in the church and they think because because the the dominant culture has told them that they are a little different than the rest of us they sit on the same pews as us share the same heritage as us and yet they think they're better than us but then there's another crowd, the disciples, those who have, who are singing the song, I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. Then there's another, there's another crowd that can say to the Lord, listen, we've left everything behind us. We need to know what's ahead of us but then there's another crowd you know that crowd that says now listen we've been watching John and his disciples pray we know what they are about you need to teach us how to pray so we'll know what we're doing out here then there's another crowd 
where the spokesperson stands up and says, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. That's the crowd that Jesus turns to in order to teach them. Are we still together? I bring the matter to your attention because I just believe that even on November 9th in 2014, God is calling the remnant forward. You know the one that's singing that song just like I just mentioned, no turning back, no turning back. God is calling that crowd that's determined to be focused even in the world that's trying to distract us with trinkets uh, and momentary pleasure. God is calling that crowd. You know the ones that's determined, come hell or high water, I'm pushing through to see. what. Am I preaching to the right crowd in here? So it is interesting, it is interesting, the disciples, but you know and I know that the disciples, they're probably not the crowd that most of us would have chosen. Most of them have sketchy backgrounds. <laughs> and, and let's tell the truth, they're really not the most stable brothers in the world. They with you today and talking about you tomorrow, right? They claim one thing today and then try to cut you off from your vision tomorrow. Remember, remember, Peter was the one that Jesus called the rock in one passage. And then in the very next paragraph, he called him a stumbling block. <laughs> this ain't the most stable brothers in the world. But what I want you to see is uh, that God rejects the notion of what, of what the standard is to be a disciple of Christ rejects the world's notion of what the standard is to be a disciple of Christ because God says you don't have to be perfect, you just have to be faithful. Boy, y'all missing that. Because if you let us take a vote in here right now, and you know I don't believe in voting in the church, but if you let us take a vote in here right now about who deserves to be in here, don't look now, but the person sitting next to you wouldn't even vote for you. <laughs> I mean, they sitting there smiling in your face, but they know some things about your background. And, and if, if it were a secret vote, you best believe, dear heart, they wouldn't check your name. That's all right, I'm a priest today anyway. So Jesus lets us know that perfection is not the qualification. Faithfulness is the qualification. Somebody say faithful. Look at it again. Because what we learn in the second instance, remember, first instance is, first instance is, everybody not going to go with you all the way. It's time to start pruning your crowd. I think I told you, but let me tell you again. This idea of hope, and I mean, we just talked, right? This idea of hope, uh, nothing is going to get done in your life. <clears throat> unless you are able to remain focused. The fact of the matter is, I see where he's going, that's the second time. The fact of the matter is, the fact of the matter is, uh, uh, remain focused. The fact, fact of the matter is, sisters and brothers, that, that, that if you're going to remain focused, you have to have a made up mind. That's the second thing. Uh, uh, you have to make up your mind. The Bible teaches very clearly, right? Uh, that, that a man or a woman with an undivided mind will not get anything from the Lord. In other words, you can't ask today and believe that God is going to do it today and then tomorrow doubt what the Lord is going to do in your life. Somebody say, make up your mind. I am afraid, sisters and brothers, that what may be plaguing many of us is not that we don't know that he is, it's just that we don't have our minds made up to stick to that of which he has called us. If you know that the Lord has assigned you, if you know that the Lord's hand is on your life, if you know that the Lord is doing great things among in your life, if you know that God has great plans for you, then the call, sisters and brothers, is uh, to make up your mind to stick with it. Are we still together? 
together. Make up your mind. We, we may as well just talk. So look at what happens. In, in verse 10, chapter 16, are we together? In verse 10 of chapter 16, what God teaches us there is, uh, you are ready, listen, you are ready <coughs> for a more, a more dynamic walk with the Lord. You're ready for a more complex uh, uh, assignment on your life when you are able to take care of the little things. People with a made up mind take care of the little things while expecting God to do great things. Here it is. The, uh, the Southern Baptist missionary said, do great things for the Lord while at the same time expecting God to do great things for you. Don't miss it, sisters and brothers. It's not so much in the big, uh, I can't stand this blessing. It is found uh, in, uh, are you a good steward of the little things that God has placed in care? Are you taking care of the people that he's put in your employ? Are you taking care of the details of the assignment that God has put in your life? <laughs> Somebody say the little things. Yeah, God says, if, if you can remain, if you can remain faithful, right, in the stewardship of the $10, then he will open the door for much more. I know I'm right. I know I'm right. I know I'm right. I know I'm right. If you can get yourself uh, so that you're not a slave to discover a visa, <coughs> then God will put some money in your pocket. But God is not going to keep blessing you to bless discover. Yeah. If, if you can be faithful to see, then God will give you the harvest. But if God can't trust you with the seed, if you are greedy with the seed, if you don't have sense enough to plant the seed and you're trying to hold on to the seed, then you can't expect the big harvest. Somebody say the little things. Are you doing the little thing? Are you thanking God for the ham and cheese sandwich? Right. Or, or do you wait till he lets you go to Ruth Chris? This, this, no lie, no lie, no lie, no lie. Brothers, you with me on this one. Brothers, you with me on this. If your hair has ever been woolly, you know how to thank God for a good haircut. <laughs> come on, come on, say amen. <laughs> Sisters too, huh? Somebody say the little things. Verse 11, verse 11 uh, uh, teaches us if we can, if we can remain undivided with somebody else's stuff. <sighs> what I found is that in the contemporary church, everybody has a great vision. God has shown And Ms. Leola, we can't work the vision of the kingdom, but we want God to bless what we've been thinking about. It's just us, so I'm going to talk. You can throw your tomatoes after I leave. I got one for you. In whatever house you are sitting that has cross on the top, somebody say the church. If you're not with the vision of the church, then you can't expect God to bless your house. If, if, if God has given his house a vision and you on the phone tearing down his house, then you can't expect God to bless your house. Here's another thing I recognize, Brother Rogers. Everybody in here clapping ain't with the vision. Yeah. 
I am so blessed. And I am so, and I want to bless you. I am so, so overwhelmingly blessed by the Lord today, and I want to bless you. You know what God has taught me in the last month or so? Stop being so naive. Stop, stop being so naive as to believe that everybody that's grinning is smiling. Just because you see some teeth don't mean that they're happy for you. Boy, you better hear me today because I may not be talking about the church. I might be talking about your boo or your spooky. I might be talking about your co-worker that's trying to pump you up. Trying to get you to go talk. And when you stand up, they're going to take a step back. Somebody say, stop being so naive. Well, the lesson is, listen, look at what's happening. And I know it's funny, but let's be clear. Look at what's happening. What Jesus is doing is transferring the vision of the kingdom of God to people who are used to running their own thing. Matthew, Matthew had a good spot on the dope phone. Right? Matthew was rolling. Right? He wasn't a little dude that's got the dope under the rock. Matthew had the little dudes with the dope under the rock working for Matthew is used to doing his own thing, but Jesus said, I need you to grasp this vision. Right? Remember Peter and John? They were rolling. They had boats. They were not fishing for somebody else. They had their own boats. And Jesus said, that's cool, but if you want, if you want, a, if you want everlasting life, then you have to run with this vision. Somebody say this vision. Here it is. Here it is. It may not be the grove, but God will put you uh, in a position, uh, put someone over you who has a vision. And until you are able to submit yourself and run with the other person's vision, God will not bless your vision. I'm right. And we already practice it. If you really think about it, we already practice uh, this idea of running some, with someone else's vision. Because some of you are going to work tomorrow. Right? And I don't know uh, uh, where you work, and I don't know your boss, but I guarantee you, when you hit that clock or when you log in onto that computer, you are working someone else's vision. Yeah? You're working someone else's vision. And at the, end of, at the end of the pay period, you want them to reward you for making sure that their vision keeps going. Now, if we can do that for the world, how much more should the people of God run with the Lord's vision? May not be a hoop and a holler, but I know I'm putting this word in you today. So here it is. Verse... 13. Verse 13 says, you can't serve two masters. But either you're going to hate the one and love the other. You're going to be loyal to one and despise the other. You can't serve God and mammon. I wish I could have a conversation with William Bell. You know William Bell, don't you? Trying to love too. Just ain't easy. I wish I could have a conversation with the brother. I would tell him uh, that trying to love too is not about being easy. I would tell William Bell that trying to love too is impossible. You can't really love too. At the same time, you can't really love two women or two men at the same time. You can't have two favorite ball teams at the same time. You can't really, you can't really love God and love his church too. I just messed up somebody's theology. Can I tell you uh, that God never called you uh, to love the church? 
That's something black folk have come up with. I love my church. God said, if you love me, I'll do what you'll do right by my church. I am afraid. This ain't even much in the notes. I am afraid that too many people are in love with the institution that we call church and don't even know the God of the church. That's all right. That's all right. When you leave here, you're going to know the truth today. The Bible says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind. Not the pastor. If pastor is God, you need another church. Somebody say you can't love two. You can't love two, baby. Because this is really about... See, Brother Brooks, you, you got us acting up in here. Let me come. You can't love two because this is really about attachment. Somebody say attachment. Make up your mind today, right now, from henceforth, forever and forevermore. Make up your mind that I am going to be divinely connected to the living God. Undivided, baby. My mind is made up. I don't care who goes with me. I don't care who gets angry. I'm going with the Lord because I'm divinely connected. It's about attachment. Somebody say attachment. It's about loyalty, dear heart. It's about loyalty. To whom are you going to be loyal? Are y'all walking with me? Come on, say amen a little louder than that. To whom are you going to be loyal? If you're not loyal to God, then you can't expect God to be loyal to you. That's why the word says, make up your mind. If you attach to the Lord, I guarantee you, God will help you to do the things that you want to accomplish. But you have to make up your mind, I'm with the Lord. Make up your mind, I'm with the Lord, and God will help you to get out of debt. I'm right, I'm right, I'm right. Make up your mind. I am with the Lord and God will help you to earn the diploma or the degree. Make up your mind. I'm with the Lord. God will give you the promotion. Don't miss it. Uh, God won't make your job give you the promotion. God will give you the promotion. Because promotion doesn't come from the east or the west or the south. Promotion comes from the... Somebody say attachment. Make up your mind today. I am undivided. My mind is not going in two different directions. My mind is steadfast. I'm pushing forward. My mind is connected to the living God because he is the one who has life. I'll give you this one and I'm gone. Remember, remember when Jesus taught and gave of himself and when he, when he, when he went too deep and started talking about his body was the bread and, and his blood was the wine. Everybody start walking out on him, bro. The undivided crowd, I mean the divided crowd, the divided crowd started walking away one by one. Out. 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 Jesus took a type. Jesus took at the type. He said, Go out to. You leaving too? Peter says something powerful. Peter says something. Peter asked the question, where, you where can we go? Because I think I came to tell somebody today. If you make up your mind to attach yourself to the Lord, God will put you in a place that you might have life and that more abundantly. If the word blessed you today, would you give God your best hand clap?
the Lord, he is good. And his mercy endures forever.